Dear students, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our English seminar for today, in which we are going to talk about Unit 9 and Unit 10. As you know, students in Grade 12, again, welcome to our English seminar for today. Well, dear students, dear colleagues, let me first welcome my colleagues in the studio who are going to participate me. Ms. Ula al Mu'i, an English supervisor from Tartus. Good afternoon, Ms. Ula. Welcome Mr. to Damascus. Thank, Thank you. you. And Mr. Mazin Abdel Karim, uh, an English teacher from Damascus countryside. Good afternoon, Mr. Good afternoon, Mazin. Mr. Well, dear colleagues, dear students, as you know, uh, in Unit 9, in Unit uh, 10, uh, as we are used to, we uh, have a number of uh, skills. Of course, today we are going to talk about uh, or to discuss a number of texts found in uh, Unit 9 and Unit 10. Of course, uh, after uh, discussing the, these texts, we can talk about some grammatical skills in these two units. We can talk about uh, uh, the conditionals, we can talk about the causative verb have, and of course we have uh, some color idioms or some music idioms, sorry, uh, and some phrasal verbs. Uh, uh, maybe we have some connecting words, we can talk about them. Some adjectives maybe, uh, they are different in the form or different in spelling, but they, are, they have uh, the same meaning. So uh, that's it, this is our program for today. Well, I think, uh, dear colleagues, it's a good idea if we uh, start with Unit 9. Text. I think Unit 9 in the activity book, we have a very important text about uh, let's say, some traditional crafts in, in Aleppo. Um, when we say, Miss Ula, a craft, what do we mean by the word craft? Craft, we mean things we make by hand, handmade mm -hmm. objects, for example, mm -hmm. like uh, jewelry, for example, mm -hmm. like weapons, things like that, things mm -hmm. that uh, need the skilled people so it to is work, a, artisans a profession. to work. Exactly. It is a profession. profession. Yes. yes and related to something made by, by hand. hand. By so hand. And when a person art. makes things by hand, we call it. Artisan. His craft is so and so. That's it. Yes. This is the meaning of crafts. Of course, uh, in our area, in our region, and because Syria is famous for uh, its, let's say, uh, ancient uh, civilizations, ancient roots, uh, a number of uh, skills have been developed in our region. Exactly. Because Syria or because of the important location, location. of Syria uh, at the crossroads of these ancient roots, roots. Uh, there are a number, let's say, or some uh, civilizations, uh, let's say passed civilizations through passed this through this area and because of this we can see a number of uh, uh, crafts. traditional crafts, um, especially in Aleppo. Exactly. We can consider Aleppo, of course, the second city. largest uh, city in Syria, and because of its location, we can find in Aleppo a number of crafts, in fact. So this text, I think, in Unit 9, uh, let's say, deals with uh, the traditional crafts in Aleppo. Well, we have, of course, a, a number of new vocabulary, and we have a number of questions. We can answer these questions. Maybe we can add some other questions to these four questions uh, found uh, at this page. Well, uh, if we look at the first paragraph, when we, uh, 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 let's say, uh, read it, from the very beginning we can uh, read the first sentence, which is considered the key sentence here. Uh, Syria has undergone a period of modernization in the last few years, we know that, with new buildings, improved transportation, transportation services in its cities, yet it remains an ancient land mm -hmm. that has enjoyed involvement and interaction with many different civilizations over the over last, last 10,000 10, years. And as I said, because of its important location, a number of, let's say, uh, traditional crafts have been developed in our region. Now, if we uh, want to answer the first question. Why is there such a variety, Mr. Mazin, of historical crafts yes, in Syria? Because uh, of uh, Syria's uh, location at the crossroad of several ancient trading routes. That's it. So the word crucial here, Mr. Mazin, of course, means uh, important, important, very important. Very important. Yes, essential, important. Yes. How are these traditional crafts, Ms. Ula, uh, being threatened? Uh, well, they actually, are being threatened. Yes, yeah. they are being th threatened by 
uh, globalization mm -hmm. or let's say a mass produced goods that are imported uh, that are yes imported from abroad so we because can, of that you we know can, people we can explain this in our own words yes because people uh, prefer things that are cheap exactly nowadays we have large companies maybe we don't uh, see uh, anymore maybe small shops or those people who make things by hand, by hand. No. Uh, we have a few number very few of number. artisans yes. nowadays who do this so because we have large companies nowadays maybe uh, these uh, crafts are being threatened, threatened. Of course, globalization is one of the main reasons yes. which threats. Because, you know, handmade objects need time, case. need they are expensive. Uh, and so not all people like to buy uh, such objects, you know. Yes. They like to buy it as presents or things like that. So okay. mass-produced goods are threatening. Exactly. Uh, uh, these are, uh, exactly. Now, if we talk about the city of Aleppo, Mr. Mazin. Yes. Of course, there is a market in Aleppo, yes. dedicated to protecting handmade copper goods. Yes. Why? Why? To ensure that this ancient craft does not vanish, mm -hmm. does not disappear. So this is the meaning of the verb vanish, vanish. to disappear. disappear. Um, now, uh, we have discovered copper crafts all over the region, right? Uh, when we say uh, artifact, Ms. Ula, what do we mean by the word Artifact. Uh, it's artifact an object. It means an maybe. object of cultural and historical importance. Or historical importance. It yes. gives information, maybe, about yes. how people lived in before. Yes. 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 So they have discovered. I mean, the historians. Historian. They have discovered. Let's say, uh, jewelry. Uh, a number of copper artifacts all over the region. Some of these artifacts date back, maybe, uh, to the Bronze Age, around 3000 BCE. Now. And historians, after they discovered these uh, artifacts, mm. they identified a number of uses for the material, which is yeah. copper. Mm -hmm. What uses have they identified? Yes. We have weaponry, jewelry, ornaments. They found like that, that a number of these artifacts has been used. were made uh, from maybe copper. copper. Like what? Jewelry. Jewelry, yes, ornaments, weaponry. ornaments, and, and weaponry, yes, or weapons, yes, exactly. Okay, why, uh, Mr. Mazin, are uh, copper artifacts useful to historians? Because these items uh, give us information about the ancient peoples, and uh, the way, and tells us about the way they live, how they lived, yes, how they and interacted, how interacted with other people, with, with each other, yes, or with, with other maybe. Civilization. Other, other civilizations. Maybe. Yes. Now, there is, uh, we have in Aleppo, of course, the Aleppo Craftsmen Union. Mm -hmm. And the Aleppo Craftsmen Union, as it is mentioned in the text, is trying to revive, to refresh, maybe? The industry. Yes, to re uh, revive. To this world famous industry, By which is copper industry. Copper yes. industry. How? By is the Aleppo Craftsman Union trying to refresh this By establishing industry? a training center and promoting the local and regional trade of copper products. Yes. Now, when we want, let's say, to make copper goods, there are some processes included yes. in this process. What are the processes included yes. to make copper goods? Yes, they Mr. are. Mazin. Yes, they are cutting, cutting the copper and uh, welding the cover and ornamentation. Ornamentation. Yes. Maybe we need like to, patterns, to, to decorate so something. Yes. You think it's so yes. This is what we call mm. ornamentation. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, now, uh, the metal then has been, uh, has to be thoroughly cleaned before it is suitable Sometimes it's poisonous. for sale. Yes. Yes, yes, that's right. Now, as we know, currently, or nowadays, Miss Ula, uh, a small handful of artisans continue to practice this craft. Of course, we said why. Uh, we mentioned the reason. Because, because they are of globalization. Yes. Because they are written by globalization. Globalization and mass-produced products. Exactly. Uh, but there are they some, are encouraged. still some local people uh, who are being, let's say, encouraged, encouraged to learn the skills needed to make ornate copper items, which for will be commercial sale. Uh, suitable for commercial, commercial reasons, yes. Yes. etc. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank if we you. go back now to uh, uh, 
let's say some words at the top of page uh, uh, page uh, 52. 52 yes uh, we have in exercise one a number of a new vocabulary yes. as we said artifact, artifact means an object or cultural or uh, historical interest of his yes. uh, cult cultural or historical interest and the word skilled, Mr. Mazin, yes, uh, when we say he is a skilled man, yeah, he is a skilled person or a skilled he craftsman. He is talented and he yes. is skillful. Having a uh, special yeah, ability special or ability, talent. Special talent. Or uh, artisan. He's a worker in a skilled trade. Usually, Usually making items, making by, items hand. by hand. This is what made objects. Uh, so, mean by yes, artisan. artisan. And uh, when we talk about the word ornate, of course, the Bronze Age, there is no need to explain it. Yes. Ornate... Uh, uh, here decorated it means decorated yes with complex patterns, patterns or, or constructions. constructions that's it so we hope dear students that maybe uh, y some students find this uh, dear colleagues this difficult. text especially this one Hard. maybe uh, difficult it's not difficult in no. me, but because maybe some, it has some, some vocabulary. new vocabulary but it's not difficult no, at all. It's, not. Uh, it's, it's so easy. Yeah, it's actually. interesting. It's about history. It's about how our, our, our history, culture, our, our culture, our Alipo civilization, yes. uh, especially center. in Aleppo. In Aleppo. Yes. Uh, now we can uh, move on. I think to uh, this is the the text which is found in Unit Nine. Unit but maybe nine. we have in Unit Ten. Ten. Uh, in uh, maybe two. Two text, units. Uh, uh, two, one in the students' book. One text book, in the students' book. And one in the And one text a in... Actually, we have uh, one in the unit nine about the biography about Tariq as a yes, carpenter. Yes, yes. Let's go on in the activity book. Still in the activity, activity book. book. We are Everest. still in the activity book. Let's go on to talk about... Uh, climbing. Uh, climbing climbing Everest. the... Everest. 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 Yes. yes, exactly. Here. Here we are. Yeah. Now, uh, some uh, there is a person called... Edmund Hillary. Hillary. In Would you please, Miss Ula, give the students or give us an idea about this person and what he did uh, uh, as a whole? Edmund Hillary was the first person to climb Mount Everest, the yes. summit of Mount Everest, and that was in 1953. Mount Everest, as we know, is the highest mountain in the world. Uh, it is about 8,848 meters high. Uh, he didn't do that on his own. He had a companion called Tenzing Nor Norgay, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, and they were part of the ninth British expedition to attempt no. to reach the summit. Thank you, Mr. Ola. Mr. Mazin, uh, I think summit is well known to yes. everyone. Yes. Peak. Uh, it is peak the or top. Uh, the top. top. Top point. Exactly. Yes. Uh, now, when we talk about the word expedition, what do you mean by the word expedition? Yes, we mean a group of people mm -hmm. who uh, have uh, a mission to do, who have... It's a journey for a, journey a scientific for purpose, scientific maybe? purpose. Expedition. Yes. Yes. So it's a journey for a scientific, scientific expedition. Scientific expedition or yes. just personal uh, expedition. Yes, yes. So Edmund Hillary was the first person yes, to, reach. to reach the summit of Mount There Everest. were attempts before, and but he was he was first. not alone. No, yeah. he had a companion. Uh, he had a... Companion, yes, and he had expedition uh, called button. Tenzing Norgay. Yes, uh, and they were part both yes. of the ninth British expedition to attempt to reach the summit. Mm -hmm. Now, how many people participated in, the in this expedition? Three hundred fifty people. Three hundred fifty uh, people. They were uh, doctors, Sherpas, and these are the people who live in the Himalayas. Cooks, porters. Cooks, porters, and many yes. others. Yes. There were eleven climbers. But in the total. climbers were eleven. Yes. yes, and they climbed in Only two. eleven. Yes, the okay. climbers. Yes, the yes. people who climbed. The others were Everest. helping. Yes, the others in the team were helping. Yes. Now during this journey, Mr. Mazin, yes. they worked in two. They okay. faced, let's say, uh, a number of difficulties. Yes. What kind of difficulties did they face, or did the team face in the journey? Yes, uh, they they faced a lot of uh, extreme cold. Mm -hmm strong winds, yes. rising heights, and dangerously low levels of oxygen. Mm -hmm. yes. And the temperature were below zero, a freezing point, and they were at constant risk of getting frostbite. Yes. So they had a lot of When we say risks. frostbite, yes. what do you mean by this? Uh, yes, frostbite, uh, which means that 
because of it is very cold, mm -hmm. their uh, fingers yes. Yes, may fall. Mm -hmm. yes. Because they are frozen. Yes. Exactly. I think it is explained in the next page. Yes. Injury caused to the body yes. by very cold temperatures. Temperature. Let's say we become frozen. That's it. Even the blood, yes. maybe. Yes. So, and they say uh, they shouldn't uh, touch the part that is uh, yes, uh, harmed. Yes. Now, when they made it to the top, of course, when they made it to the top, I mean, Hillary and his companion. They had a selfie. Uh, they did something. What did they do when they reached, when they reached the they top? They took a picture. They took a photograph. Yes. Photograph. Why did they took this photograph? To record, to document. To prove, to prove, to document, to show that, that they, they, that they reached had the reached summit. the that highest point on earth. Yes. Good. Uh, now, uh, was this achievement the last achievement for? No, Hillary? it was no. the first of a series. It no. was the first the achievement. First in a among series, series of, of yes. other achievements. Other achievements. What did he do later, Mr. Yes. Mazzi? Yes. Uh, Hillary uh, scaled several other peaks in mm -hmm. the Himalayas mm -hmm. and later he establish, uh, established the Himalayan Trust, trust uh, an organization. So the Himalayan Trust, trust yes. is an organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the Himalayan Trust? It, it is a an organization established by by Hillary. By Hillary. Mm -hmm. To help. For what reason? Yes. To help people in the Himalaya. Mm -hmm. Yes. To help them. To build hospitals, be build, schools. Yes, to build schools, hospitals. To help them in their life. And transportation Good. to improve the communication there. Very nice. So if we go now to the next page. I think we have an exercise too, a, a nice exercise here. True, false. Yes. Uh, it contains a number of statements about the text, but maybe we need to correct them sometimes. Yes. Sometimes uh, they are uh, some, not correct. We, we, we should decide whether these yes. statements are true or, or false. false. And then if they are true, it's okay. If they are false, we need to correct, correct them. Yes. Now, the first one, uh, Mr. Mazin, please. Uh, before Hillary, no one had managed to reach the summit of Mount Everest. Yes, it's a true. It's a true because, yeah, because it is mentioned in the text that Hillary was the first, the first person to reach the summit, the summit of Mount, of Mount Everest. Everest. So no one before uh, had managed to reach the summit of Mount Everest before Hillary. Yes. yes. No one at all. There might have been attempts, but no one They attempted, reached. but they didn't, didn't maybe reach. succeed. Yes. yes. Uh, what about sentence B, Ms. Ula? Hillary retired from mountain climbing after conquering Everest. No. It's not correct. The mm -hmm. truth is that mounting, sorry, conquering Everest was the first in a serious achievements. In other words, we can say Hillary continued, continued. mountain climbing, yes. maybe, after conquering yes. Everest. Yes. So he had a number of achievements number of after achievements. conquering Everest. Yes. So maybe uh, the, the first student step. here, I think, have different uh, ways. has different ways to correct the statement. Mm -hmm. He can use his own words, oh. of course, to give correct information. Correct information about the text. Of course, here uh, it's not true that Hillary retired uh, from mountain climbing after conquering Everest. It means that uh, in the text, as it is mentioned in the text, he continued mountain climbing and he established uh, an organization to called help. the Himalayan Trust to help the Nepalese Sherpa, Sherpa communities. Mm -hmm. So uh, the student here, I think, can use his own words to give correct information, mm -hmm. but not any other information. No. He should Concern. focus on the text, the information, or the, the main idea of the statement. Yes. The same statement. Mm -hmm. uh, here, some students sometimes give Extra. different statements which have no relation mm -hmm. at all with the given statement mm -hmm. in the exam. In this case, I think they will get zero why because they did not, did not stick correct to the yes. point they correct. did not to stick to the yes. text correct the uh, same statement yes they moved to something different so it's not true to uh, give sometimes uh, i can give you many true statements mm -hmm. about hillary and they are mentioned mm -hmm. in the text mm -hmm. but it's not uh, the task it's not the target the target here that this sentence has a mistake and your task is to, to correct. correct the same mistake mentioned in the same sentence. 
Am I right? Of course, and uh, sometimes they even write uh, more than the requested uh, sentence. Yes. Uh, for example, it's one line, they write like three, uh, four lines, mm. it's included, but this is too much. Yes. So again, it will get zero because uh, they are just trying. They don't know the right answer, so exactly. they have to pay attention um, to that. Thank you, Ms. Ula. Mr. Mazin, what about uh, sentence C, please? The climbers attended the coronation of uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Mm. Uh, it's false mm -hmm. because the climbers at that time mm -hmm. when the coronation took mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. they were uh, uh, climbing Everest. Yes, they were not yes. in England. No, they were so, not there. Uh, it's not true. It's not so true. So how can we correct it? The so climbers we can attended? Say, the climbers did not attend. Did not the climbers were uh, uh, climbing Everest well, when I the mean, coronation took exactly. place. Or arrived yes. after the coronation. Or, after, or arrived after the coronation of Queen. Uh, yes, that's true. So we have different, different ways. Different ways, as long as it's... Um, and the last one, Ms. Ola, the last please. one, Hillary set up charity to improve the lives of the Nepalese Sherpas communities. So it's true. It's uh, true. Charity, the he same set thing up, as trust. The, he, the verb set up means established. Uh, established. established. So he established Started, yes. a charity to improve the lives of the Nepalese Sherpa communities. In exercise three, again, we have a number of a new vocabulary, vocabulary and they are mentioned in the text I think they are explained very well here uh, the students task here is just to match the meaning of the word with its meaning with its correct meaning mm. when we say altitude yes what does it mean height it means height height yes. number three extreme extreme very great or severe yes Oxygen, we know that it's a gas. The gas we breathe. breathe. We need to breathe. Constant. Constant. Uh, staying the, the same, same not, not changing. changing. Uh, frostbite. Frostbite, this is the injury caused to the body by cold temperatures. And the word Sherpa. Himalayan people from uh, famous yes. for their skill as mountaineers or the climbers. Thank you very much. Now we can move on to Unit 10 in uh, the... Uh, student's book. Yes. Here we have a very nice book, a very nice text, sorry, uh, about uh, a person called Tariq. Hinault. Hinault. Oh, okay. Not Tariq. Hinault in Unit 10. Uh, yes, I unit think uh, uh, Tariq is, it's okay, it's a nice reading text, but I think because they can use uh, it for writing we don't have enough time, I'd like to focus on, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a bigger text, maybe a longer uh, text. The vocabulary That's is simple it. with the, and, uh, yes, that with text, Tarek. and it's uh, used to write the paragraph. Maybe, yes. uh, in a ten, we have this uh, text Mr. about Bernard uh, Henault. Bernard Henault. Uh, what do you know about him? Okay, for over ten years, he ha he he's a, a talented sportsman. He's a cyclist. So for over ten years, uh, since 1970s to 1980s. Uh, uh, he dominated. He dominated the world, the world of, of cycling. cycling. So He's he dominated, cyclist. he controlled. He controlled. The world of cycling. He, he, he was number first. one. He was, he was number one. Yes, exactly. Uh, in the world of cycling. Yes, he's one of the fastest uh, cyclists. In the 1970s in and 80s. Yes. He won over 200 races mm -hmm. during his, his exceptional career and he broke numerous records. Many records. Many records. Yes. Uh, he's he the only rider to have finished either first or second. So he always won or became mm -hmm. second, mm -hmm. never third. Good. Uh, as I can remember, Mr. Mazin, yes. Bernard Henault was called the Badger. Badger. Yes. Why? was Henault called the Badger. Why did they call him Badger? Badger, yeah. a Badger. On account of or because of his reputation for being extremely competitive and dedicating himself fully for each race. Okay, what is the meaning of the word Badge. Badger? Badger Badge. is an animal mm -hmm. and it is uh, known uh, and it's known for uh, its ability to compete mm -hmm. other uh, animals mm -hmm. and he is uh, very great stubborn maybe yes, stubborn. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay so uh, he shows maybe strength Three, yes. competition mm -hmm. competition uh, right dedication so, dedication that's why they called badger. Uh, Henault the badger yes. because uh, as you said he had a reputation he, he showed yes uh, he was competitive, competitive. 
he dedicated, dedicated himself, himself fully to each race. Each race. And uh, after some years, uh, there was a famous rivalry, rivalry. between Hinault yes. and another cyclist from the elite. Uh, when we say elite here, what do you mean by the word? He is one of the best. Group containing the, top, the yes. best. The top. The top group. group the top most group. skilled. The best, yes, the best. They are considered the best yes. in the world of cycling. Mm. So another, uh, let's say, uh, competitor Greg appeared. Lamont. He was called... Greg Lamont. Greg Lamont. And during... 1986. The, in the year 1986... In Tour de France. Yes. What happened? Uh, well, unfortunately, Lamont won the race mm -hmm. after a year of competi competing. So uh, the two men fought continuously to win the championship with Lamont emerging as the eventual winner. So Hinault Re retired after that. Uh, this man was not number one in that year. In that year. He lost the race. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. And uh, Greg Lamont was... The winner. The winner. Good. After uh, this... He retired. Uh, he not yes. retired, retired from cycling as being a cyclist, but he he as kept being working. As a cyclist, yes. but he continued Work in the world of cycling. Yes. Uh, like what, Mr. Mazin? Yes, uh, he is heavily involved uh, in the way uh, in the many high-profile cycling event and is often seen on the stage at award ceremonies. Mm -hmm. and, and he, he has written several books telling the story of his rise to success. They, uh, these books, uh, they also include details of the difficulties he had encountered on the way, the crashes, injuries, and problems. Good. And as so well, these yeah. were the difficulties he mentioned in his books. Yes. So he wrote a book. Uh, what his experience? To, who did he write the book for? Yes, he aspiring wrote, uh, yes. cyclists. For aspiring. aspiring professional cyclists. Why did he write the book? To, to give them, to to give them some tips, tips realistic, and advice realistic advice about how to reach, to the, reach top. the top. Good. To, to become now, the best. Uh, his story, an old story, shows that becoming the best in any field is a challenge. Of course. This challenge requires two things. What does this challenge require? Or Determination need? and dedication. Yes. Determination and dedication. Determination. Determine. Determine. When someone is determined, he, what do you mean by that? He will just... Uh, he has a strong will, strong will to do something. Will, to something do everything. And he will achieve it. And dedication. Dedication. It's almost to the give same. Your time, to give all to your time and to effort. To committed to something. To invest yes. everything you have yes. in this purpose. Yes. Uh, Mr. Basel, uh, here also, this, uh, this advice, we give it to all our dear students. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pass your exam in baccalaureate, yes. you have to be... You have to have a lot of determination and, and dedication. dedication to your study. Of course. Not only uh, a cyclist. Uh, as a student, yes. in, all our life, in all our life, we need these two uh, factors or yes. elements in our life. Yes. Uh, we need dedication and, and we need uh, determination, determination. To, if you want to achieve success in any field, of course. Uh, we hope so. We hope that our students uh, are working hard on these two elements. Yes. Well, uh, I think it would be a good idea if we go back now to uh, unit level. nine, okay. maybe so we have some grammatical skills, dear colleagues, dear students. Uh, in uh, uh, exercise number one at page uh, 72 in the student's book, mm, so we have uh, some musical instruments okay. and we have some musical idioms yes. or some idioms related to music yes. at page 72. Yes. Here, as I think, uh, these words are well known to all the students, accordion, and uh, we have piano. pictures here, uh, we have photos, we have, so they are well clarified, yes. Uh, yes. flute, to refresh guitar, their memory, piano, maybe, yes. oud, tabla, trumpet, violin, am I right? Yes. 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 So, uh, now we have some verbs, verbs to be used. when we want to, to, to play music uh, with some in some of these instruments, we need verbs. And specific verbs right? to be used. Or we cannot say, for example, I play tabla. Of course not. No. I cannot use this verb, 
with no. tabla. No. Yes. Right? We hit so the here tabla. we have in exercise two uh, uh, some verbs in the list. Yes. We have blow, bow, hit, pluck, strum. Now, and we have some statements here. Let's start, Mr. Mazin, with yes. the first one. Yes. You have to saxophones have to, and yes, please. Yes. You have to blue saxophone or trumpets. Mm -hmm. Yes, the word to? blue. A blue. Yes. Why? Because we need air. We yeah. need just air to to, to make, make a this sound. instrument to make a sound. Make we need air yes, here. So sound. Yes. So here we need to use the verb uh, blue. A blue. blue. Yes. You have to uh, blow. blow a saxophone. Saxophones or and trumpets. trumpets. Yes. And the next one, Miss Ola. Uh, you can either pluck or strum a guitar. What is the difference between these two verbs? Nothing, actually. They are pluck, almost strum. the same. Maybe sometimes we need to use a feather, maybe, to, pluck. to, to produce a sound, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And sometimes we use our fingers, our fingers to, to yes, produce to the, sound. the sound. So when we use our fingers, we use the verb pluck. Which one? Pluck. pluck. And when we use, the feathers. when we want to use something to produce a sound yes, strum. on the strings, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we uh, on the, the music of the of the musical instrument, yeah, the we strum. need to use something strum. here. Mm -hmm. yes. So we say strum. strum. Yes. Good. So you can strum or, or pluck, pluck a guitar, the guitar. but, but the you usually violin, bow. Bow. Why? Because maybe we carry we the violin the yes, we on need our shoulder, maybe. And, and we we have something. We have a stick or something to yeah. use. Yes, bow, a bow, violin. Yes. Uh, what about the last one? You hit a percussion instrument with the sticks or hands. Hit? Yes. Course. You hit. Tabla. For example, yes. tabla or drum. Yes. A drum you can use your hand. You hit. Yes, or you hit it something. with the sticks. Yes, yes. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Now, uh, after uh, clarifying the verbs with some musical instruments, now in okay. English we have something called idioms. idioms. What do we mean by idioms, my colleagues? Well, idioms, it means that we have certain words that cannot be understood unless you know the words. Mm -hmm. They are used maybe in everyday language and uh, only the native know the meaning. So You mean we, we cannot translate them word by word? word. By no, we no, try, to, uh, yes. try to we translate have to them. Be, we to be familiar we with them. We won't understand no. the meaning. No. It, so it's we, a, it, it's kind an idiom. Of, yeah. That's kind, it. kind of, we need to memorize them. Yes. In one way or another, or get so, used to it. Some idioms in English are related to music. Yes. yes. Like what? W we've used let's before try. color yes. idioms. Exactly. Before, Let, now we have a music idiom. Yes, you're right. Let's try to read these sentences. Yes. Let's start with the first one, Mr. Mazin. Yes. Leila is very good at blowing her own trumpet, so she will probably get the job. So here, the If I someone idiom, is good at blowing his or um, her on trumpet so it means he says uh, good, things. Uh, good things about himself he mm -hmm. hosts yes. yes exactly exactly they this is the meaning themselves. to say good things about, about yourself. herself or yeah. yourself. yourself so if someone is very good at saying good things about himself we or say. herself we so can say he, he is he very good at blowing, blowing their own trumpet. his or her on trumpet, trumpet. Uh -huh. Uh, what about the next one, B? If you break the law, you have to face the music. You have to face the music. If we try to translate this into Arabic, it won't be, we no, won't understand no. anything. To face the music, it means... To put up with the consequences. To stand face the, the punishment. punishment. Yes. You have to accept, accept the punishment. punishment. Yes. Or Good. To face to the consequences. If you break the law, you have to accept the punishment. Accept the punishment. Yes. That's it, to face the music. Uh, what about the next one? Yes, the importance of crossing the road safely is drummed, in, drummed into children when they are very young. The idiom is drummed into. Mm -hmm. It means to teach by frequent repetition. It is taught. Yes. They are, so here the importance of crossing the road safely is taught, it's taught. in taught. children. Yes. We but by repeating. taught them, taught them. Uh, how uh, to cross the road, the road safely. safely. So, uh, uh, when we say change uh, drummed into, it means teach oh. by frequent repetition. repetition. To and teach someone mm. by frequent repetition. And this area It's a behavior, is, by is the way. The, it's a Mr. behavior. Yes. Mr. Vassal, and this area is usually used uh, in passive voice. Yes. 
Yes, you, always. They are drummed into, into, or it is drummed into something. Yes. Yes, or into them. Yes. Into the children or into other groups yes. of into, people. Into students. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, what about the last one, Mr. Omar said he was going to buy a porch, so he changed his tune when he mm -hmm. discovered the price. So change his tune, it means change his mind. Good. Change his uh, opinion about the thing. Because it's very expensive, he cannot buy it, so... Change his tune, change his mind, to change his mind. Yes. Yes. Good. Thank you very much. Thank I think you. it's very clear now. Now we can uh, go on to talk about something different, dear colleagues, Grammar. dear students. Uh, we have, as I said at the beginning of this seminar, a number of grammatical skills. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is, let's say, they are included in the book, of course, uh, of the baccalaureate. Most of them, yeah. And uh, most students know about them because they uh, yeah. learn them in grade nine. Mm -hmm. yes. They uh, were taught in grade nine. They the are familiar, yes. So they are familiar with zero mm -hmm. conditionals, uh, first conditionals, second, second, second and, third. and third. When we talk about conditionals, dear colleagues, dear students, what do we mean? by a conditional sentence from the very beginning, Ms. Uh, well, it means that we have a condition. We have two actions. Uh, if the first one happened, what are the uh, uh, percentage of happening okay. the second one, for Let's example. have some examples, yes. please. Uh, for example, if we start with the zero conditional. Zero conditional, it's something like it's a general situation. Uh, about the use or yes. about the form, let's start with the form. Yes. Uh, we start with the if, it's an if clause. Uh, if and present simple, the second part is going to be present simple because this is a general situation. So if the first part happens, the mm -hmm. second part is mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. for sure. Yes. For example, if you heat ice, it melts. This is a fact. It's a fact. It's a so fact. So there is no need to use will here. No. That's no, why no. we call them zero conditionals. Yes. Zero conditionals can be used to talk about general either, either or a routine or a fact. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, if I have time, I always visit, I always visit my them. grandparents. For I always watch them. It's a, a habit or a routine. I exactly. do all, so it happens I always all do. the time. And we can use them to talk about facts, as you said. Yes, for example. If you hit ice, it melts. It melts. Of course, or we can to talk uh, about use them. Sequence of events. I mean, uh, if uh, let's say uh, children are hungry, they eat. They cry. They cry. <laughs> Maybe. They cry. If they are hungry, they cry. Or babies. Babies. Okay? Baby, babies. They Let's cries. talk about babies. They shout. It's, it's a sequence of events. Mm -hmm. right? It's a general fact. Exactly. Right? So when we talk about general facts or something obvious or clear, mm -hmm. we know what will happen next. So it becomes a fact. There is no need to use will here in this situation. It always happens. Uh, so the zero conditionals, as you said, can be used to talk about facts. And here fact. we have... Uh, so a good how, how often about it. Uh, will the ice uh, melt yes. if it's heated? Always. Yes. And of course, we can use it the opposite way. So we can start with ice melts if mm -hmm. you heat it, but this way we have to omit the comma. You know, we don't. If use you the comma. boil water, it evaporates. It evaporates. It's a fact, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, if the temperature is below, below zero degrees centigrade, water freezes. Water freezes. Water freezes. So it's again a, a fact. fact. It's a fact. Yes. Uh, now, we can, as here, as it is mentioned here, of course, as you said, we can begin or start our sentence with, with the if clause, result. and we can begin uh, with the result clause. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you heat ice, it melts. If uh, ice melts, if you heat it. The, yes. uh, the same meaning, but the difference with the comma, we don't use yes. the comma anymore. When we start with the if clause, we need the comma, of course. Thank you. Uh, what else? The f first conditional. Mm -hmm. Now, this is done with the zero yes. conditional. The first conditional, almost the same, about the form. We use with if, present simple, but uh, the result, uh, the result is we're going to use will, will and infinitive. Mm -hmm. For example, if it rains, I will wear a jacket. Now, this is a general uh, situation, but we, not a general situation. We are talking about a specific situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. I will do that. It's not In something fact or routine yes. or every day, happens yes. every day. Mm -hmm. If it rains, I will wear a jacket. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can use it again the opposite way. She will watch TV if she has time. 
We can start with the result close. Yes. And again, this, is, uh, this happens all the time, but this is a specific situation, not a general situation uh, like zero conditional. Yes. Thank you very much, Ms. Thank Ola. you. I think it's very clear. Now, what about the second, second conditional? conditional? The second conditional, the form, if plus simple past, the, uh, this is if we close, the result is would plus the infinitive. Uh, example, if I had more money, I would buy a car. So if we close, if I had more money, and this is simple past, I would buy a car, and this is would plus infinitive. Yes. Uh, would plus infinitive, there is a, this is if we close, the result is if plus simple past. So we can also uh, vice versa, make mm -hmm. them vice mm -hmm. versa. Mm -hmm. The result uh, would be would plus infinitive, and if plus simple past would be if we close. Yes. Example, I would buy a car if I had more money. If I had more money, I would buy a car. So mm -hmm. both are correct. Yes. What about the third conditional? The third conditional, uh, the form is if plus had plus verb three, the result would have plus verb three. So uh, example, if I had known about the party, I would have gone. Uh, would plus have plus verb three, the result is, uh, sorry, if a close is if plus had plus verb three. Example, if I, ha I would have gone to the party if I had known about it. And this is, we call it uh, impossible. Mm -hmm. So it can't happen. We're going to talk about them in details later. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mazin. Now, uh, as you said, Ms. Ola, any conditional sentence must have. have two clauses. An if clause. Sentence with if clause. has an if clause. And the main and clause. And the main clause at, uh, as it is uh, clarified okay. here in yes. the slide. For example, if, if I... If I hear any news, yes. I'll phone you. Mm -hmm. Or I'll phone you if I hear any news. Good. So now, we have an if clause and a main clause. The if clause, it means in, it includes the if. Yes. The other one is the result clause. So as we mentioned... We mentioned the four types, but in general, we can say there are three common verb May, patterns yes. of conditionals. Mm -hmm. uh, first one, second and third. Type one, type two, type three. Type three. Yes, please. The first one, if we take a bus, it will uh, it'll be cheaper. So the first one, present simple, simple future. Yes. Second one, if we took a bus, it would be cheaper. Simple past, would, with infinitive. Yes. The, type, uh, the third type, if we had taken a bus, it would have been cheaper. This is the impossible case, like uh, Mr. Mazin has just said. Of course, uh, they have different meanings. Of course. The situations are we, different. We can explain the in meaning. Type one, in type 1, uh, the situation is not like the situation it, in type 2, is not like not. the situation in type 3. We are going to talk about uh, them in details. In details. Now, uh, let's talk or let's start with type 1 or the first conditionals. Mr. Yes. Mazin, please. Yes. Uh, type one if present tense and well. Yes. If you po if you post the letter today, it will get there by Thursday. If you don't hurry, the others will go without you without us. Here, the present tense in if clause refer to a possible future action. Mm -hmm. So the first type of conditional clause is used to talk about something which is possible in the future. You mean uh, the situation is possible if the condition has been achieved? Yes. If you post the letter today, it will it'll get there by Thursday. Yes. If you don't, it won't. Yes. If That's you don't it. post, it won't. It won't. If yes. you don't hurry, the others will go without us. Mm. But if you hurry, they will the go others with will go with us. With us, uh, yes. That's it. So here, uh, it is possible to happen, the situation, if the condition, as we said, has been achieved. Mm, yes. Here, the present tense in the if a clause refers to, as you said, a possible future action. Yes. So we say, we use the first conditionals to talk about something which may happen. In the future. In the future, it is possible, possible. to happen if the condition has been achieved. That's it. 
uh, and we know now the form. The students should know the form of type 1. I mean, in the if clause, they should use uh, the first form of the verb, the simple present, and in the result clause, they should use the future simple. Mm -hmm. simple I features. mean, will and the zero Infinitive, form. Zero yes. form. Yes. yes, that's it. What about type 2? Yes, type 2, if the past tense, the result uh, would plus verb zero. If I had million pounds, I would probably buy a house. It would be awful if you lost your passport. Nice. Yes. Here, Mr. Mazin, I'd like to focus, in fact, on uh, the verb in the if clause. It is in the past simple. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some students think that type 2 is used to talk about something in the past. Mm -hmm. no, no. It not is not a true. No. no. Uh, this past is called unreal past. Unreal it past. is unreal an imaginary situation. situation. Imaginary. Yeah. Yeah. We are imagining something about yes. now yes. which is not true. Not true. Not correct. Yes. So but it might happen. It might happen mm -hmm. and it might not it happen. It might not happen. Yes. So here the past tense Mr. Here the past tense in the if clause refer to something unreal, something imaginary. So, so uh, Miss Ula, when I say if I had a million pounds, it means that I don't have. I don't the, have. I uh, may this want money. The, the, the no. I don't itself. have it. Yes. Right. It, uh, right. I would probably buy a house. It means that uh, I don't have uh, a million pounds. But it's not. And a I can't buy a house. Okay. It is not possible now. Not impossible. It, uh, but not impossible, of course. It is not possible now. No. But no. it could be possible, could be possible in, the in the future. future. Yes. Right? Uh, it would be awful if you lost your passport. If you lost. It means that you have your passport. You have your your passport, passport, passport is with you. Mm -hmm. But I'm imagining mm -hmm. something. Bad situation. An imaginary situation. A bad situation would happen Threatening right? this if you lost your passport. Mm -hmm. Something bad would happen. Right? It would be awful. It's of my course. opinion. Of course. So... What else? Type 3? Yes, yes Ms. sorry. Ula, please. Type 3, uh, this is the impossible part. That's it. Things that didn't happen. Uh, yes. Didn't happen. I like to call it the parents' uh, speech because mm -hmm. parents like to do this. Mm -hmm. If you didn't do that or if you hadn't do that, you wouldn't have done, you know. So okay, let's okay. have the example, then of we course. can talk about yes. okay. the We room. lost. We lost. We lost. It's oh, over. Really? The game is you over. You lost. Yes. You lost the game. Yes. What okay. would they say? If we had won the match, we would have got through the final. Mm. Well, we lost. We can't go back in time. No, no, no. So this, this case is called impossible, impossible to happen because we it are happened. imagining something about the past that will never happen which again. Which is not true because we lost. Yes. But we are imagining the opposite. Right? This is what you mean. Yes, exactly. So here... Uh, the next example, please. If we had taken your advice, we would have saved a lot of time. It means that so we didn't we, take your advice. We lost time. We didn't. We it didn't. means that we didn't take your advice. Both cases. And uh, we didn't save a lot of money. No. We lost maybe. Time. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of time. time, sorry, not money. Yes. Okay. Uh, it mean, here, if we focus on uh, the if clause, uh, the, the tense used here is the past perfect. Past perfect and, and would the tense have used with the past participle. In the result clause is called perfect conditional. Yes. We have would, would and have and past have participle. And past participle. Now, as you said, we use the past perfect to talk about what the, didn't what happen. What didn't happen and what will never happen, happen because it's in the past. So we call it impossible. impossible. This condition. Impossible. This case. So if you had worked hard, you would have passed. Good. So I've lo uh, uh, I failed. Good. Oh, I hope, dear students, uh, dear colleagues, that uh, everything is clear now about conditionals. Well, I think it's a good time to have a break. Okay. Uh, let's have a break for some seconds and then we can go back, dear students. Let's have a break. Thank you.
Welcome back, dear students. Hello again in our English seminar uh, uh, in the baccalaureate. Uh, we were discussing before the break, as you know, dear students, uh, uh, some grammatical skills. We were talking about conditional statements. As you know, we said, dear colleagues, mentioned uh, the three types or the four types of conditionals and uh, the reason why we use each type. Now, uh, we can, uh, let's say, do some practice. Uh, I think it's a good uh, idea to do an exercise to show the students how we can correct tenses, maybe, uh, in the conditional statements. And they uh, sh should put their in their mind that even if we don't have exercises yes. on the conditional, yes. they are important. Let me start with you, Mr. Yes, Let's start uh, doing this exercise. Okay. I phone you if I arrive okay. early. So here in the if clause, we have arrive. And arrive is in the present simple. Mm -hmm. And this is a special situation, not something general. So we will say, I will phone you if I arrive early. Yes. If you told me a secret... I if you will phone you if I arrive, if I arrive early. early. So here, arrive is in the present simple. In the we present use simple. The future. The future, because yes. this is a special situation, not general, to okay. use the zero conditional. The next one. If you told me a secret, I wouldn't tell anyone, because we have told simple past. Yes, so the type, second two. Part, type two. Type two. I and wouldn't... I I would tell anyone. In so the main clause. We need to use would. Would. Here. Would with yes. the infinitive or yes. the base form. Yes. Now, if I be you, I would apologize. So again, I would to the teacher for being impolite. So I would apologize. So the if clause will be if I were you. Yes. And this happens most of, most of the time. If I were you, I would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I were rich, I would buy my parents a new car. If I were rich. If I... Now, we have to look at the second part or the main clause. I would have phoned for help. Would have phoned. Th so this is the third. Type three. Type three. Third conditional. If I had seen the accident, I would have phoned for help. It means that uh, I didn't see I didn't the see. accident. I didn't and see I didn't the accident. I, I didn't phone I for didn't help. Phone anyone. But I'm imagining. Imagining. If I had seen the accident, I would have phoned for help. Yes, exactly. Yes. If the driver had fastened his seat belt, he uh, he would have saved his life. So he he's dead it now. It means uh, the driver is dead now. Uh, is dead now. Yes. Yes. He should. Uh, so this is uh, something we need to pay attention to. We should fasten our seat belts. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, we have another exercise, Mr. Yes, Mazi. Let's do it, please. Yes. <clears throat> if I have enough money, I go to Canada. This is type one. Mm -hmm. If I have enough money, I will go to Canada in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, the second one. If I had enough money, I go to Canada. If I had enough money, I would go to Canada. This is type two, the second conditional. If I... Had, had had yes this is number three type three if i had had enough money i would have gone to canada so three examples about mm -hmm. three patterns of if clause in the first condition in the first case mr Mazur, yes if i have enough money i will go to canada it means that we are talking about something which may happen in the future in the future and this thing may happen if the condition has been achieved, mm -hmm. achieved if I have enough money. Yes. So this is type one. Type one. The next sentence, if I had enough money here, I'm imagining, imagining about, the present, about something which is not true. Which if I had enough money, and I would go to Canada. It means that uh, I don't have this money now. now. And I won't go hand. to Canada. Yes. 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 And the last one. The last one is impossible. If I had had enough money, money. means that I'm talking about the, the past, past, not the about past. the present. Yes. If I had had enough money, it means that I didn't have enough money in the past. Enough money to go I to Canada. I didn't go to Canada. Yes. So it's impossible. Yes. Uh, yes. If I be you, I would apologize to the teacher. Be here, where. where. So again, it's like wish. With all pronouns, we use where. I would apologize to the teacher. Uh, if the driver hadn't driven too fast, it, uh, it's type three, he wouldn't have had an accident. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't 
have, have had. had, because here we need to use the perfect conditional. Yes. Uh, would and the verb have, the main verb, uh, the present perfect of have is have had. Yes. We cannot use has here. No. Why? Because we Based have would. Would. Modern. After would, we, After we need to use zero form. zero form. So the zero form of have is have, have. Yes. not has. No. So uh, some students may think that after he, they should use no, has. Not no, no. After case. the model, we use zero use form. Use zero form. Mm. Wouldn't have, wouldn't not have. wouldn't has. Yes. Wouldn't have had yes. an accident. If we didn't have electricity, modern life would be difficult. So we are imagining our life without electricity. Yes. And our life would be difficult. difficult. Yes. The last one. If there were no legal system, some people would behave badly. Mm -hmm. Again, we are imagining our society without laws. Laws. Yes. And there, there would be chaos situation in the society. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Now, we can move on to talk about a very important, uh, let's say, uh, rule. And grammar. confusing for some. And a little bit, it's, yes, confusing for some, to, for some students. Uh, but uh, if we uh, look at it as a grammatical structure, it's a very easy, very easy yes. rule, mm -hmm. structure. And I think it would be a good idea, dear colleagues, uh, for the students to understand, uh, let's say, the purpose of using this rule in order to understand mm -hmm. of the structure itself. Okay. The why. Sometimes they look at the structure and the grammatical structure. They don't know why mm -hmm. we use it in, in, in our real life. I think before giving the students any grammatical rule, you should link it with life to the real so, life to yes. real life yes so they should know why Am we I wish using, yes. to know how to write a wish mm -hmm. sentence mm -hmm. they should know how to talk about processes to use the passive voice mm -hmm. they should know how to report someone's speech to talk to convey or report to, to report someone's speech to other people mm -hmm. and they should know this because rule the and the purpose of using this uh, structure mm -hmm. let's try first to compare between some structures in English. We know we have the active voice. Mm -hmm. What is the active voice? We have here an example, Miss Ula. We can start talking about the causative verbs. Mr. Mr. Mazin, Miss Ula, yes. please. Causative verb. I cut my hair. It's an example. It's an example. Okay. Uh, we have uh, subject, verb, object. Here we are. Uh, the sentence is a, an active verb. You mean here, uh, you are trying to analyze, let's say, yes. the grammatical structure here. Yes. I is the subject, subject cut is, is the, verb, the verb, and my hair, and is, my the hair object. is the object. So here the speaker is the doer. Is the doer. Yes. So I mean. he, the, the speaker himself, uh, has done the action. Yes. What about the causative verbs now? With the, 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 the causative verb, verb have. I mean, we have a different structure now. Yes. Yes. Different structure. It's not active of course no. it's called causative, causative. Um, would you please uh, well let's give us see an this example i had my hair cut yes well i cut my hair but i didn't do that myself mm -hmm. someone did that for me mm -hmm. and this is the causative verb so this is the grammatical structure of yes the, the grammatical structure is that we start with the subject then have in the suitable tense, it's based we on use, the... We, we use have in any tense. In any tense, it's not a problem. Yes. Uh, then, then after the that, we use the object, the thing we are talking about, mm -hmm. and we finish with the past participle. And this is the main verb in the so, past participle. Simply speaking, when dear students see such a grammatical structure, I, then you have the verb have, then the object, then the past participle, this is a it means that the speaker is not or the subject is not the doer mm -hmm. himself or herself or themselves. Mm -hmm. The speaker, uh, the, the doer, sorry, is someone else. Okay, we can relate that to the passive right? voice in one meaning or another uh, because the speaker is not the doer, yes. like in the passive voice. In the passive voice, we change the be based on the tense, and in this yes. case, we change the have based on the tense. Yes, yes. Okay, 
Uh, so here the speaker is not it's the door. Not the door. Someone, Someone else, else did, the, did action. the action. Now, we have some uh, statements now. We know that uh, here, Mr. Mazin, for mm -hmm. example, the yes. first sentence, my brother yes. didn't repair the machine himself. It means that someone else yes. repaired the machine, repaired the machine yes. for him. Yes. If we ask the student to use the causative verb have, the student should know the grammatical structure, structure which of is uh, the causative verb have, yes. and he can apply easily mm. uh, this rule on this sentence. Yes. I mean, he can say... Yes, uh, my brother or he... He can use a pronoun. A pronoun. Instead of saying my brother, brother he can he say can he. Say. he. Yes. yes. He had the machine, or he can say it, uh, instead of machine, repaired. You know, you mean, Mr. Mazin, because the sentence here is negative, we my brother to... didn't repair the machine so himself. Someone the else did. It means someone else he repaired asked the machine him, yes, for him. Yes, he asked someone to do so it. So when we him. want to use the causative, we, we need to use it in the positive form, in, not in the negative form. When it's negative, right? we use the positive. And we need to use verb to have, the verb have, in the same tense as the sentence. Yes. Didn't repair is in simple the simple past, past negative. Mm. So we need to use the simple past of have in the positive mm. form. So, which is had. Yes. Uh, had is the simple past of have. Mm -hmm. So he had, instead of saying the machine, we can use it. It. It, yes. yes. If the object is singular, we, use we it. can use it. We can use it. Yes. If this, the object is plural, we can use we them. We can use them. That's yes. it, simply. So he had it repaired mm -hmm. or he had the machine repaired uh, another example my brother repaired the machine himself here, here this speaks the opposite yes here. it is the opposite uh, my brother himself repaired the machine yes so uh, the causative would be negative uh, and the same tense he did not have it repaired good yes when we say my brother repaired the machine it means that he didn't ask he didn't someone ask else to do the yeah. action for him he is the so doer when we want action. to use the causative we need to use the negative form not the positive mm -hmm. form mm -hmm. he didn't have it is the negative form of have uh, in the simple past yes. uh, didn't have it repaired mm. thank you we have some more examples yes to make things clear okay now, I couldn't repair the computer myself. I couldn't repair. Now, this is past. Mm -hmm. So, again, we need to focus on two things. First of all, if the main sentence in the negative, the causative verb should be in the positive. If the main vo if, uh, sentence in the positive, the opposite. Mm -hmm. So, negative, positive, positive, negative. Yes. Again, we have three parts, three elements. We have the subject, the object, and the past participle. Let's work on this one. Okay. The subject is I, the same. Now the tense is the past. So we put have in the past tense. So it's I had. The object is the computer. We don't need to repeat the computer. We use it. We can use it. I had it. Now the past participle of the main verb. What is the main verb of repair. the sentence? Repair. So past participle repaired. So yes. the causative sentence would be I had it repaired. Good. Subject, then object, and after that, Subject had, object, and past participle. Thank you. Thank you. The next one, please. Yes. Brides rarely make their own wedding dresses. Again, brides, we can replace it with they, the pronoun. The uh, tense of the sentence is make. This is simple, simple present. So we use have. They have them, them, for the wedding dress, and uh, made past participle so of the make. Some students may think that it is positive. No. We have no, the rarely, rarely, rarely yeah. means negative. Rarely. rarely. The same meaning, yes. Rarely. Mm. Brides rarely make. Rarely. Seldom. When we say they rarely make, it's it the means same that meaning. They, don't, they don't make. In general, they don't make their own dresses. wedding dresses. dresses. Yes. yes. Right? Yes, of course. So it's when negative. we want to use the causative uh, form here, we need to use the positive form. Exactly. Of the causative the verb. The causative have. verb. So we say... They, they, instead of saying brides, brides we use no they. need to repeat. And they have, because we have make, yes. it's a present. Their them own is wedding the dresses. Them. This is the object, object and it is them. plural. Plural, so we them. use them. And past participle made of the main verb. The main verb is make. Yes. Made. Yes. 
Now, people don't service their cars themselves. Mm -hmm. Again, the, it's in the negative form. Uh, it's in the present simple. Mm -hmm. And the main verb is service. Now, people can be replaced by they. The uh, have in the present form is have. So they have. We are talking about their cars and it's replaced by them. The past participle of the main verb is serviced. So they have them serviced. Yes. The last one, we didn't cut the trees in our garden ourselves. Again, we have the past simple, didn't cut the past simple. Negative. Exactly, negative. And we are talking about the trees, this is them. Mm -hmm. Now again, we had them cut, we had them cut, no need to mention the rest. Yes, we had them, them cut. cut. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, we can move on to talk about something different. That's everything about the causative, of course. It's unit if we have nine. enough time, we uh, can, can do, do, some exercise. uh, do some exercises in the activity book. Mm -hmm. But for the time being, we can go on to talk about the past perfect. I know that uh, in Unit 10, uh, we uh, mentioned the past perfect simple and the past perfect y continuous. Unit 10, yes. So, Let's try to have a, a comparison. First of all, I need a short explanation about the past perfect, simple, then the past perfect continuous, then we can make uh, a comparison. comparison between them, mm -hmm. then we can do some exercises in the activity book. Yes. Let's start with the past perfect simple, please. Yes. Well, in, uh, in the, uh, you know that past perfect was mentioned before, maybe in unit three, Unit 2 and Unit 3, yes. we talk about the perfect. But this time in Unit 10, we are talking about how to write about background information. Mm -hmm. So they mentioned the past perfect again. Past yes. perfect simple and past perfect mm. uh, uh, continuous. Yes. Do you like to start? Yes. Okay. So the simple past, uh, the past perfect simple, simple. Uh, is used when we have two action in the past. Mm -hmm. One of them took place before another. The first one which happened first is simple uh, past perfect and the second one is simple past. You mean we usually, usually. use the past perfect to yes. talk about something happened before, before something, something else in the, past. in the past. That's it. When we have two actions, actions, we can say we use the first one which happened first in the past perfect yes. and the next one in the simple past. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can say that, okay, we use the past perfect to talk about an action that happened before another action, mm -hmm. not only before another action, or time, time. By, in the past. By, by yes, year, for yes. example. Uh, as in the example here, by 1854, it's a time. time, it's a phrase here, and don't think, dear students, that this phrase is a fixed time or a specific time. Not in. It's in not a specific time. 1854. When we say in 1854, simple past. It's we, we have to use the simple, simple past. past. But when we have by 1854, like this phrase here. We have to use So we perfect. have to use the past perfect. Mm -hmm. It means that, uh, let's say, a quarter of the population of Ireland had immigrated to America, to America. before mm -hmm. the beginning yes. of the year 1854. So a large number of people in Ireland immigrated before the beginning mm -hmm of this year. This yes. is the meaning of the yes. sentence. So we don't know the exact time they had immigrated, but we yes. know that it's before. It's a period of time, period yes. of but time not before. a fixed time or, let's say, something specific. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, next one, please, yes. Mr. Mazzi. Irish people immigrated because so many had died of starvation. So, mm -hmm. first of all, many of people had died mm -hmm. of starvation, and then Irish people started immigrating. Thank you very much. Uh, in fact, I'd like to stop here. Okay. Not to finish the seminar, of course, but to talk about this sentence. Uh, Irish people immigrated. It's okay. Why did they immigrate? There, is, there, there, is, there was a reason. Mm -hmm. Now here, uh, because so many had died. So here, this situation, it means that uh, they had died of starvation. I mean, a large number of people died yes. of starvation. Before. And this reason made other people Cause. emigrate or leave the area, leave Ireland. Uh, in the exam, when the students have 
sentences like this. I mean, when we have two clauses, the first clause is in the past simple, as we have here, immigrated, mm -hmm. and we have because. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think they have other choices, not only the past perfect. Where this is what I mean. When we ask the students to correct the verbs in brackets in the exam, mm -hmm. they saw because, and they think sometimes that they have only one choice, which is no. the past perfect. The answer is no. You have other choices. We can say here Irish people immigrated because so many people were dying, were dying mm -hmm. in Ireland at that time. We can use the past progressive, I mean the past continuous. We can use the past simple because so many people died of starvation. Yes. So I think three tenses here are, are, are possible and are accepted in this situation, not only the past mm -hmm. perfect. But here we mentioned the past perfect to clarify why we use the past perfect. Some statements in uh, know, Unit it's, it's 9, mentioned. in Unit 8, in Unit 10, in Unit 7, in any unit, they are mentioned in some exercises mm -hmm. to train the students to use, let's say, uh, a specific tense. Mm -hmm. But they should think, I, I think they should know that they have other choices sometimes, not only the, the tense mentioned. mentioned in the exercise. When they read the rubric, for example, use the present perfect here, or put the verbs between the brackets in the present perfect. It is an exercise in Unit 3 about the present perfect to train the students to know how to use the present perfect. But it doesn't mean that this sentence, in this situation, if it is in the exam, that they you have only, only one. one choice. They should think of other choices. Other. Sometimes, not all the if time. They didn't know. If some they know, sentences, okay. in some sentences, they should know that they have some mm -hmm. other choices. Uh, we have some key words, of course, and of they course. should know the key words very well. Now, let's go back. We have a call from Ala. Uh, good afternoon, Ala. Good afternoon, teacher. Uh, hello. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, you're calling us from Damascus, Ala? Yes. Damascus. Where do you live? Uh, I live in Damascus. I live in Damascus in Maraba. In Maraba. Good. In Damascus countryside. So, uh, you have a question. What's your question, Ala? Uh, the question is uh, is similar of passive. It's what similar is to what? Passive, sorry, sorry, sorry. Passive. To the passive. Okay. Yes. Uh, what is the difference between cursive and passive? Uh huh. Mr. Mazin will talk to you. Yes. <clears throat> okay. The the causative, the, the passive, uh, we use it to focus on the object. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we say, for example, uh, I, I clean my room. My room uh, is cleaned. Here I'm using the passive. But the causative is when you, when you ask someone to do something instead of you. For example, I clean my room. If you want to make it uh, causative, for example, you say, sorry, I don't clean my room. You say, I have... It means that someone, someone else cleans, else the, cleans room for you. the room for you. So I have my room cleaned. So bo uh, both this, uh, the causative and the passive are similar because we have the past participle, but uh, the passive, we just uh, change the... Uh, the place of the object mm -hmm. into the first uh, sentence, whereas the causative, we uh, just uh, keep it at the beginning of the sentence. So this is the difference between uh, both. Uh, Ala, thank you, Mr. Mazin. Uh, Mr. Mazin focused on the form. Yes. I mean, in the passive, we start with the object. Yes. When we use the active, we mean that the subject, or we say th uh, the sentence in this case, tells us what the subject did. Yes. When we use the passive, we mean that the sentence here tells us what happened to the subject. So the subject in this case is the receiver of the action, not tra the transmitter. While in, uh, and the purpose of the passive is different, of course. While the purpose of using the causative is again different from the passive, mm -hmm. as you said, uh, in this case, we mean that someone else did the action for us not the speaker or not the subject in the sentence. It's more personal. It. The so you have, Allah, 
to learn by heart the grammatical structure, structure. of the passive and, and the, the grammatical positive. structure of the uh, causative verb have. Uh, Ala? Yes, it's... Uh, do you have another question? Uh, yes, I... What's your question? What's, uh, no question. No questions? Yeah. No okay. Question. Is it clear now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go back. Okay. Uh, Ala has asked just, uh, just asked a, a nice question. Mm -hmm. The difference yes. between uh, the passive and the causative. The, causative. Uh, the students should know, in fact, that we have different, three different grammatical structures mm -hmm. if we want to write the sentence. Any sentence. We can write it in the active, we can write it in the passive, passive. and we can write it in the causative, the causative. form. That's yeah. it. That's it. Uh, the main structures. The main structure. Now, let's go on. Uh, you were talking about the past perfect, Mr. Yes, Mazin. Yes. We, use, we use the past perfect to talk about a situation a st uh, or sta a state, state feeling, a feeling or an action in the past. Anything. Yes. A situation, yes. a state means a condition, any yes. condition, feeling or mm. action. Action. For example, for example, Tariq, uh, Tariq felt nervous because he had never flown before. Good. So felt the, nervous. Yes. Why? Why? Because he had never flown before. Good. Yes. He didn't experience this before. This before. Yes. It yes. was the first time Tariq it. felt maybe, right, or travel by, by plane. By, yes. by plane. Yes, by plane. So uh, it was the first experience. That's why he was. Nervous. 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 Uh, the next one. When I read the letter, I couldn't stop smiling mm -hmm. uh, because I had passed all my exams. So, so first, I had passed my all my exam. So second, uh, I couldn't. I stop began smiling. Smiling. I okay. couldn't stop smiling. So of course, you uh, a person cannot uh, begin smiling before he passes his exams. He should pass his exams first, we all feel then the same. he can <laughs> start smiling. Okay. Uh, now, Ms. Ula, thank you, Mr. Mazin. Now, past perfect We can continues. talk about the past perfect continuous. continuous. What about it? Okay, let's start with the form. Yes. The form of the past perfect continuous. Uh, we start with the subject, of course. Then we have had, mm -hmm. subject, had been. Mm -hmm. This is fixed. Yes. We always use had been. Plus the ing, ing form, form of the verb. Of the main verb. The main verb. For example? For example, he had been working very hard. He of course, here it's just an example. Example. We cannot course. say or write a sentence like this, like this. alone without any action, other verb or yes. uh, phrase, time phrase. Of course, no. we need something uh, happened But it's just an example. It's just an example. About he the had form. been working very hard. About the form. Yes. Now about the use. Uh, when, we use when we use past perfect continuous, we use it for an action over a period up to a past time. Mm -hmm. So it took a period before a past time. So again, we have two actions happened in the past. Past perfect continuous started before the second action, but it took time. It let's lasted have, on a period. Let's have an example. Yes, please. example. I went to the dentist on Thursday. Let's okay. say last Thursday. We know now that you went to the dentist at L this time, on okay. Thursday. Let's say last, last Thursday. Okay. My tooth had been aching since Monday. But before you go to for the a day. dentist, uh, so for before two, going to for the two dentist, or three days. at that time, before Thursday, I had been suffering. you had been suffering from something, which yes. is a My toothache, 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 right? Yes. Uh, since Monday. So, so uh, it lasted since, uh, for, from, three Monday, days maybe. from Monday, Monday to, to Thursday. Thursday. Continuous. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Continuous. Thursday. So uh, here we, I think, Use the past perfect continuous to focus on something. The continuous of the action. To focus on the duration it lasted, of an the action duration, that was in progress. It lasted. Before it didn't another. just happen and stop. Yes. It's non-stop. Let's have another example, okay. please. I found the calculator yesterday. I had been looking for it for some time. Before you find, found it, I you had been, been looking, looking for, for it for, for some time. time. For one week, for three days, etc. Good. Now... As we said before, uh, we uh, explained the present tenses and we showed how, showed the students how we can, let's say, distinguish between the present perfect simple and the past, uh, the, the present, present perfect, perfect continuous. Yes. Well, the present perfect simple 
and the present is perfect used to continuous. talk about something finished before finished. now, mm. while, while the present perfect continuous focuses on the duration, duration to say how long. Yeah. For example, we are, let's say, explaining uh, the past perfect uh, tenses uh, now. How long have we uh, been explaining? Four we have tenors. been explaining tenses and grammar uh, since, uh, two let's say, 2 o'clock, 2.30, 2 etc., for an hour. Uh, so we use the present perfect to mm -hmm. focus. Uh, let's talk about the past yes. now. Uh, let's have the same comparison mm -hmm. between yes. the past perfect simple and the past perfect continuous. Maybe some students uh, get confused. Uh, they don't know how to distinguish between them. Yes. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us? Yes. Okay, uh, let's say about uh, the duration of time. ING takes the time, takes the duration of time, the simple, uh, the past perfect simple, it, uh, the focus is on the action mm -hmm. itself, not on the continuous Good. or the duration of time. Good. So this simply we can say the past perfect continuous emphasizes the duration, duration of an of action time. that was in progress exactly. before another action or time in, in the, the past. past, while the past perfect simple focus is on used the only to talk about an action that happened, that happened or not before another action. That's it. This is general speech. Let's have some examples, please. Yes. I had been washing the car. My hands are wet, were wet. Uh, I had washed the car. It looked nice and clean. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, sometimes, Mr. Basil, both... Uh, are, can be accepted. Can, can be accepted. Accepted. Yes, accepted. Yes, yes. yes. I agree with you. Because we said before that... Sometimes the present perfect simple and the present perfect continuous are accepted in mm. some cases. In some cases, yeah. We and say the same, the same, the same for the past perfect simple the and same. the past perfect continuous. In yes. some cases, yes. both of them yes. can be can accepted. Be accepted. So, sometimes we can use words to show us the way. For example, like non-stop. Yes. For example, this uh, indicates the continuous. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout. Throughout, for throughout. Since. 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 Yes. Uh, times yeah. when we say how yeah. many times this is simple. Yes. Uh, For example, times. I had taken the test three times, three times. already. Yes. yes. This is the, already. It's not continuous. It's not continuous. Right? Yes. Interrupted, and so it's not continuous. And also, Mr. Russell, we can We can uh, do an exercise of course, uh, when... now, which is, uh, I think, in uh, the activity book. Okay. Uh, it is in, uh, pay, at page 63, I think. Yes. Page 63, yes. exercise two. Two. Here. Yes. I think this exercise is very good. Summarizes to make everything. This, it summarizes everything. Yeah. Yes. Uh, choose the best form, f uh, verb form in these sentences. Let's start with the first one, Mr. Mazin. Yes. Omar passed all his exams. Uh, he had been revising non-stop for a month. Here. Non-stop for a month. We focus here on, on the, the duration. duration. Mm -hmm. So yes. we should use... The uh, continuous. continuous. Exactly. Yes. Good. What about the next one? They finished making Layla's dress a week before the wedding. Now, uh, uh, they had made or had been making it for over a month. First of all, for over a month, it's it a might indicate, and sometimes we can understand from the sentence, you know, it's a wedding day, mm -hmm. so they should have uh, mm -hmm. delivered it before a week. Yes. So they had been working on it. On it or making yes. it. Yes. yes. So yes. had yes. been yes. making yes. it. Yes, we should use the continuous one. Yes. yes. We can understand the whole sentence or we can understand from the over a month. Sentence C. I went to see Ali in hospital. He had... Uh, he had broken his leg during football match. Of we cannot we use. Cannot say has it's been impossible. Break, it, yes. it takes time. Some no. verbs cannot be used in no. a continuous uh, form. Again, here. And it's, the opposite it's, way. Of it's not logical. Like, like yes. wait, right? wait. Here, students, uh, uh, Mr. Basel must also uh, take uh, take notice into the non-progressive verb yes. or state verbs, which yes. cannot be used in the past. Practice. Exactly. Yes. So here, uh, had broken his leg, and that's why we. Uh, I went to see him in hospital. Yes. So, uh, D, please. Everyone sometimes. enjoyed the family celebration. Reem and her sons had made all the food themselves. First of all, the action is the important one. We don't need the duration of time. Yes. And second of all, I need to mention something about all. Because mm -hmm. some students know that we use all with the continuous, but yes, not not all with time. Not, not all, all the food. Not all day, all the food. All the food. Yes. yes. So this is not about and, time. Uh, uh, it's logic to say. Reem and her sons, they first made the food themselves, then 
they had the celebration, yes. the family celebration. So everyone enjoyed the family celebration. The family celebration. We are talking about the action, not and the Reem, duration. Reem and her sons had yes. made the, all the food themselves. Okay. Uh, what about the next one? My uncle finally passed his driving test. He had taken the test three times already. Here, some students, because they see three times already, Simple. they may think it that is it is a duration no. or a period of time. Quite the opposite. That's not true. It is the repetition yes. of the action Interruption. Itself. This is interruption. Yes. When we have more than one time. Uh, many, uh, many times. It happened three times. I mean, my uncle, Again, uh, as let's say, uh, did the test, right? Three times. Three times. And then, and then he passed. He passed in the fourth time. Yes. So before he passed, he had it three he times. Repeated. Repeated. Yes. So he had taken the test three times already. Mm -hmm. And again, already cannot be used, I think, in the continuous, no. continuous form. Already so. just yet, they are all used yes, with yes, the simple. Yes, And the last one now. I received a letter from Hiba yesterday. She had been promising to write since last year. Last mm -hmm. year, it means it needed time. It, a duration it had been promising for a long time. Again, some uh, students, uh, get confused they get confused especially in this sentence in this sentence whether uh, to use but uh, simply we can say last. we have since last year last yes. year since last year we focus here on the duration, on the on duration. The time. i mean uh, there was a repetition mm -hmm. uh, here in this case she promised me many times many times she promised me she promised she me she promised, promised me the me. whole she year keep, she kept promising me during the year. Uh, now, at the end, I received a letter from her. Finally. So Hiba uh, had been promising to write since last year. Mm. For a long time. For a long time. Then I received a letter from her, from her yesterday. So here, in this case, we should use the continuous form, mm -hmm. okay. not the simple form. Not the simple form. form. Again, Mr. Vassal here, the student should uh, notice that since it does not mean we have to use present perfect or present perfect continuous because we have simple past. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Mazin. Thank you. Well, uh, dear students, dear colleagues uh, in the field, we hope that uh, we have done all our best to cover uh, the most important, let's say, skills in Unit 9, in Unit 10. Uh, I think we have uh, a few minutes, maybe two or three. Uh, I'd like uh, Miss Ula, Miss Mazin, yes, to give a piece of advice to uh, the students who are following us now. Please. Okay, um, about the grammar, I advise them to follow the rule. It's very easy. Don't uh, get confused. It's very easy. So follow the rule, and it's going to be easy That's and it. practice. So be, 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 before they practice. did something, they have to understand the situation. Exactly, understand the sentence. It. Yes. Yes, Mr. Mazin, thank you, uh, yes, Mr. Uh, the student uh, should study. They should uh, read the tenses because uh, I think the most important element in the baccalaureate, uh, the tenses, when they uh, comprehend or when they understand mm -hmm. the tenses, uh, everything is going to be easy for them. Some, thank you, Mr. Mazin, some students, some teachers, our colleagues in the field, think that uh, sometimes grammar is not so important. I think grammar is the most important point when learning any foreign language, because any language, because grammar controls or adjusts uh, the structures and makes you, let's say, produce correct structures. If we don't have grammar, we may maybe not understand. we won't produce correct structures. Mm -hmm. We can't understand each other sometimes because we don't have grammar. So grammar is very important. It controls our language. We should know how to use it. But when they want to learn English grammar, they should think in English, not in, not Arabic. in, Arabic. Not in Arabic. Of course, this is they my should piece understand of advice. First, yeah. Think in English to practice English, to practice English or to produce English. Well, mm -hmm. dear students, dear colleagues, at the end of this seminar, let me thank you for following us. Let me thank my colleagues in the studio, Ms. Ula uh, al Moui, an English supervisor from Tartus. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Mr. Mazin Karim, an English supervisor from Damascus countryside. Thank you for your thank participation. You very much. Well, dear
dear students, uh, this is Basil Sadek speaking from the Syrian Education Channel in Damascus. Till we meet in other seminars, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Goodbye.